Earlier this year, I reviewed one of my favorite two-in-one convertibles uh, that I reviewed on the channel, and it was really good. It was the Lenovo Yoga 9i14 Gen 7 here for 2022. It really had a nice design with the rounded edges, really beautiful display, and of course, you got the rotating soundbar. But I'm also interested in the Yoga 7 series, and Lenovo was kind enough to send over the Yoga 7i 16-inch here for 2022. Now, you can also get it in a 14-inch. I hopefully will, getting, will be getting that very soon. But the 16-inch really checks a lot of the boxes. It's got a beautiful 16-inch QHD Plus display. It's got pen support, of course, since this is a convertible. 12th Gen processors powering this. It's the P-Series, and we know the P-Series stands for power. It also has really nice 1080p webcam and a really nice all metal design. Let's see if this all comes together to make this a winner here for 2022. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Lenovo Yoga 7i 16 inch two in one convertible here for 2022. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Okay, we'll get to the unit in a moment. I believe this is the slate gray. I think it also comes in storm gray, which is a darker color. Let's start off with this. This is a 65 watt adapter, and this is the first time I've seen this one. Pretty compact, it doesn't flip out or anything, so it's a little bit different. And then the other thing is, again, it doesn't have a power cord, so you're, this is the length of it. We'll check that out. Of course, you could use any USB-C adapter from what I understand. Again, this is type C, all right? Pretty compact. And then, of course, you got warranty information and it looks like a setup guide there. So nice all metal design here. Wow, that's nice. That's how thin it is. Okay, you can see the ports there and uh, it's a very nice all metal. It's a little bit of heft. All right, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is an HDMI 2.0 port, a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out, and a full-size SD card reader. One thing about the card, it will stick out quite a bit when it's in the unit. It won't sit flush, unfortunately. That's something just to keep in mind, but good to see a full-size SD card reader nonetheless. Now, moving over to the right side is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, another USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally your power button to round out the ports on this laptop. I would say all in all, a really good port selection. Nice to see that here on this uh, two-in-one convertible. Now, Lenovo makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is remove the seven T5 Torx screws, use a guitar pick or a pry tool to pry off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that easy. That's good. Now, once inside, you'll notice a couple of things. You'll see that 71 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times later on in this video. And you'll also notice a single fan for cooling. We'll get into the thermal, surface temperatures, and fan noise as well later on. Now, when it comes to user upgradability, some good news and some bad news. The bad news first, well, the RAM, of course, is soldered into the motherboard, a trend we've been seeing here in 2022. No big surprise there. Good news is, though, it's running LPDDR5 RAM. My review unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. Now, I think the maximum you can go with is 16 gigabytes. I didn't see an option for 32 when you configure it over at Lenovo's website, which would be a little bit disappointing, that's for sure. And it sports PCIe Gen 4 SSD storage that is user upgradable. Although judging from these reads and writes, these are more akin to Gen 3 speeds, not the faster Gen 4. But of course, the good news is you can always upgrade it yourself. 
And when it comes to the wireless, this has Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.1. Now this combo card is slotted in, not soldered in. That means if you have to change it out down the road, you have that option. And the good news is both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth both working as expected. No issue on either front. Okay, let's talk battery life. And the model that I have here today with the integrated Iris XE graphics sports a 71 watt hour battery. If you go with the model that has the Arc graphics, that's gonna have a larger 99 watt hour battery. But with this 71 watt hour battery, I was able to get a little bit over eight hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking at anywhere between five and a half to six and a half hours, depending on what you're doing, which is is pretty typical of what we see here with this 12th gen p-series processor for 2022 from intel the yoga 7i16 comes in two different colors arctic gray and what i have here today storm gray we've seen this color before so no new surprise here nothing new but it is a nice color that helps reduce the amount of fingerprints you see not too bad when it comes to those fingerprints so that's been pretty good now as far as the weight we're looking at 1.9 kilograms or 4.19 pounds so definitely not the lightest convertible laptop out there and definitely you'll feel it in the bag so it's a little bit on the heavy side and when you're using it in tablet mode it can get a little little bit heavy so i like the versatility that it brings but i wouldn't be using it as a tablet all that much to be honest i'd use the smaller version of this the 14 inch in tablet mode before i'd be using a 16 inch but that's just me and this being a two-in-one convertible means you can put it into the different modes. You got tent mode, great for consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube. The same could be said for the stand mode, great for presentations and also consuming media as well in that mode. And of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode, great for use with the optional pen. Now the pen, unfortunately, is not bundled with this. You'll have to pay extra for it. Now I'm using the pen that came with the Yoga 9i14 that I reviewed earlier this year. For those interested in that one, that's a really great two-in-one convertible as well i'll leave a link to my review in the description below but the pen certainly work fine with this in terms of taking notes sketching out diagrams artwork if you're a digital artist a note taker you definitely want to gravitate towards the pen it's a great investment if you are a note taker or a digital artist that's for sure all right let's talk about the display it's a really good one we're looking at a nice spacious 16 inch ips display with a 2.5k resolution that's 2560 by 1600 and yes that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio now you'll notice it is a glossy display so if you have a lot of lighting in your environment you might see the glare and reflections it's pretty noticeable but in certain lighting conditions will be fine it just depends on which lighting conditions you're in but something to be aware of now as far as the display itself you get the really deep black the good vibrant colors the really good contrast here and it also has good coverage of the color gamut and it has good color accuracy making this a good choice if you are a content creator to do lightroom photoshop video editing and of course color grading here i think it's a decent choice and i think they went with a nice display here 2.5k resolution as i mentioned and I measured 367 nits when it comes to brightness, certainly bright enough, although I'd like to see it above 400, but at 367 nits, certainly good enough for what you needed to do, that's for sure. Watching movies on this has been really good. Consuming media in general has been really good. Watching Amazon, YouTube, Netflix, it has all worked out pretty well. It's a really nice display in terms of media consumption. There's no doubt about it. And my overall takeaway is this display certainly is a good display. I like the QHD Plus resolution. There is no option for higher resolution such as 4K. And keep in mind, this is a 60 Hertz display and no option for a higher refresh rate such as 90 or 120. So keep that in mind as well. But my overall takeaway, like I said, really nice IPS display here with a high resolution. You won't be disappointed. So this is the camera on the Lenovo Yoga 7 16 inch here for 2022, a 1080p camera IR that allows you to log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. There's also a shutter switch, a physical shutter switch on the camera for more security and privacy. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the array mics? Let me know in the comment section below. And for those that want a fingerprint scanner, it's here, it's on the keyboard. That worked well, setup was easy, and registered my finger each and every time I used it. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below.
Now, when it comes to controlling the settings in terms of this camera, go into the Lenovo Vantage app. You can control the brightness, the contrast, and toggle on the auto exposure. I like the control that it gives the user in terms of that video conferencing experience. Worked out pretty well. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. That's not something you can normally do with a two-in-one convertible. So the hinges are pretty good on this. I didn't see too much screen wobble either. So that's been pretty good. Not too much distraction when typing. I like that. And I actually like the keyboard. These are the familiar smile-shaped keys we know from Lenovo's Yoga line. We've seen it before. I think it's pretty comfortable in terms of the typing. The tactility is good. The key travels a little bit on the shallow side, but not too unexpected in this type of convertible, but actually comfortable to type a email or a long document. No complaints on either front. You never feel like your fingers are going to bottom out, so that's been pretty good. I also like the inclusion of the numpad for those number crunchers that do Excel spreadsheets. You're going to love that inclusion there. But of course, it does move over the touchpad to the left off center so some people may not be crazy about that so i guess it's a 50 50 in terms of which way you go but again for those number crunches you're going to be happy now as far as the multi-stage backlight i thought it worked well against the gray keys here not too bad since this is the storm gray version so you'll definitely be able to see the contrast between the two that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment it worked well now, when it comes to the touchpad, I thought it was a spacious touchpad, very responsive when it comes to two-finger scrolling. All the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on the touchpad. I don't have any complaints in terms of the responsiveness. It worked well. Now let's talk performance and the Yoga 7i16 Gen 7 here for 2022 is running the Core i7-1260p, a 1210 Intel processor, of course, with 12 cores. That's eight efficiency cores and four performance cores. And as you can see from these results, uh, definitely on par from what we've been seeing here in 2022, definitely with a multi-core performance, you're seeing a nice year-over-year -year increase in terms of that multi-core performance, even an increase in single-core performance as well. Everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, office email web browsing 1080p video editing it all worked fine now it does have the integrated iris xe graphics with 96 executional units but i wouldn't be doing any high-end 3d rendering 4k video editing or even gaming at the highest settings but if you lower some of the settings you can get some playable frame rates of course depending on the titles you choose and there's also the ability to add an external gpu thanks to the two USB-C thunderbolt 4 ports that this has now, when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will power throttle under heavy load, I noticed some thermal throttling, but not too much. Maintaining good clock speeds, therefore you're getting the decent performance, but it does draw a lot of power. And that's something you're gonna keep in mind when you're doing any kind of processor intensive task. So not too unusual with a thin and light convertible laptop as we have here in terms of that chassis. Now, as far as the surface temperatures are concerned, it never got overly hot, remaining relatively cool with a couple of hot spots here and there, but for the most part, remained cool to the touch. That's been pretty good. As far as the fan noise is concerned, that single fan will kick in under heavy load, but it never got above 42, 43 decibels. Not too bad, not too distracting, even under heavy load. But when you're in the quiet mode or you're in the uh, balance mode, you're not gonna really hear the fan all that much. It will kick in intermittently when needed. Just something to be aware of. And when it comes to the audio, the four speakers here, quad speakers, are actually pretty good. They're Dolby Atmos speakers helping with the spatial audio. And I thought the volume was decent, the mids were good, and there was a hint of bass. Not too bad when it comes to the audio filling up the room rather nicely. Good job on that front. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Yoga 7i 16 here for 2022? And I got to say, it's a solid 16-inch convertible here for 2022. I like the 16-inch QHC Plus IPS display. It's a touchscreen display with support for pen, of course. Unfortunately, the pen is not bundled with this unit. You'll have to buy the pen separately. But for note, note takers and, of course, digital artists, it might be something to invest in. That's up to you. There's the optional Intel Arc graphics for this, but of course I have the integrated Iris XE graphics and as I mentioned in previous videos and live streams it's getting a little bit long in the tooth but for everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office email web browsing it's going to be perfectly fine the performance out of that 12th gen Intel processor the Core i7 1260p is very powerful in terms of year-over-year -year increase in terms of performance especially that increase in multi-core performance we like to see that it's got a nice 1080p full HD webcam I like the physical shutter switch on that webcam for more security and privacy. 
And a couple of things I'm not crazy about, the soldered RAM, we've seen that before in other units this year, and I'm not crazy about that, of course. And the pen is not included, as I mentioned, would have been nice to include it at this price point. But the price point itself is pretty good. I think it's competitive for what you're getting here. So the overall takeaway is this is a really good 16 inch two in one convertible here for 2022. I'm gonna give this a score of 88%, making the Yoga 7i 16 inch two in one convertible worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy? The Yoga 7i, 16 inch, a little bit heavy, 4.19 pounds or so. Uh, again, not the lightest two-in-one convertible out there. I wouldn't be using this too much in tablet mode or holding it. Put it on a desk or a table, you'd be fine. Again, pen support, pen, separate purchase. Again, if you're a note taker, a digital artist, you want to invest in that. I showed you a little bit in this video regarding the pen. Uh, as far as the design, this is an all metal design, comes in two colors, slate gray or what we have here, which is the um, Storm Gray. So the Storm Gray looking nice, showing less fingerprints than some of the other colors. Uh, I like the port selections here, two Thunderbolt, four ports, HDMIs here, full-size SD card reader, although the cards do sit out quite a bit, well, they do stick out quite a bit. I like to see it more flush with the unit, of course, but that's just a nitpick. I am happy to have a, a full-size SD card reader, being a content creator, of course. Uh, the display is pretty gorgeous. It's a 16-inch Q. QHD Plus 2560 by 1600. It is a little bit glossy, but it is a very nice display in terms of coverage of the color gamut, color accuracy, and it is good for the things like Photoshop, video editing, stuff like that. You'll be fine. Now, as far as battery life, uh, pretty typical for this type of P-Series device. Uh, we're getting a little bit over eight hours or eight and a half hours on my continuous web surfing test. It's about a five and a half, six hour or six and a half hour device. Again, it depends on what you're doing. So please keep that in mind. Now, as far as the speakers, got quad speakers here, Dolby Atmos helping with the spatial audio. I thought the sound was very good as well. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. Now, I think the price is pretty good on this. It's pretty competitive, about $1,160 or so. I think that's a pretty good price for what you're getting here. Of course, there are some competition in this category in the 16-inch convertibles. We've seen a few of them in the, in, recently on the channel. Check out my links in the description below if you want to see some more. But I think overall, it's a good value, good price to performance ratio, and I like what Lenovo did with this iteration. Again, I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.